I'm Hope Rugo. I'm a breast medical oncologist and director of breast oncology and clinical trials education at the University of California, San Francisco's Comprehensive Cancer Center in San Francisco, California, in the United States. Uh, today, we're at the uh, at Gramado at the uh, Cancer de Mama conference, and uh, I've had the pleasure of attending this before. It's a fabulous conference with, I think, very timely topics of controversial nature, a lot of discussion, and uh, really tremendous involvement and interest on the part of the audience as well. The session we had this evening focused on heterogeneity, an increasingly important area in the treatment of breast cancer, and really an area that's leading us more to towards personalized medicine for breast cancer. There were three different topics within our session, and mine was HER2 positive breast cancer. Looking at the heterogeneity of HER2 positive breast cancer, there's really a lot of interesting areas, looking at everything from uh, the tumor itself in terms of how much protein expression exists, the ratio in terms of fish testing and response to HER2 targeted therapy, the intrinsic subtyping, looking at RNA, uh, DNA mutations, uh, and then now looking at the immune response uh, to HER2 positive cancers in terms of tumor infiltrating lymphocytes to understand how that impacts response, as well as the uh, polymorphisms in IgG FC gamma receptor uh, CD16A alleles. So a lot of different areas of heterogeneity and we're understanding more how these areas impact response. For example, we know that pathologic complete responses are lower in ER positive, HER2 positive disease than ER negative, HER2 positive disease. We know that PI3 kinase mutations may abrogate to some degree response, but that HER2 therapy still works in those subcategories of tumors. We know that hormone receptor negative disease is more likely to be HER2 enriched and that HER2 enriched subtypes of breast cancer tend to be HER2 addicted. In other words, they're exquisitely sensitive to HER2 targeted therapies. Whereas hormone receptor positive tumors are less likely to be HER2 enriched and more likely to be luminal-like. We also know that there's a subgroup of breast cancers that are more basal-like and tend not to respond as well to any therapy. We know that tumor infiltrating lymphocytes in HER2 positive cancer uh, has correlated having more lymphocytes with better response to therapy in the neoadjuvant setting and better outcome. Uh, and then we're looking at, in an exploratory fashion at a new FC engineered antibody called Margituximab that may be able to overcome some degree of resistance in patients who have a low affinity CD16A IgG FC gamma receptor alleles. How does this all play out into clinical practice? Well, we have novel agents that are effective in different subtypes of HER2 positive disease, even a novel antibody drug conjugate uh, called trastuzumab DS8201 that seem to have some effectiveness in both resistant HER2 positive disease and HER2 low disease, those tumors that are one plus and two plus by immunohistochemistry. We have tyrosine kinase inhibitors that may be able to overcome some degree of resistance and combination therapy may work better in certain subsets of breast cancers. So really we ended uh, talking about the importance of using the neoadjuvant setting to try and better understand heterogeneity by dividing tumors by and patients by how well they respond to standard therapy and then using our novel agents to overcome resistance. And we've already seen some evidence that we can do that in the post neoadjuvant Catherine trial where TDM1 was effective largely in hormone receptor positive cancers where patients did not have a PCR to neoadjuvant standard HER2 targeted therapy.